complex life forms. So, continuing on with our look at um, IC uh, theory, and we're going to look, gonna do an introduction to what complex life forms are, fundamental and harmonic frequencies, look at the general equation of a comp complex wave, look at harmonic synthesis in a bit more detail, uh, this is a way of being able to uh, construct um, particular wave shapes and then I'm going to give you a chance to experiment with complex waveforms using the Desmos graph and software. So a quick, I've got the um, online, the user guide printed off for you and I'll give you a couple of demonstrations on how to use it. Really, really good piece of kit for um, looking at different functions and being able to graph them. All right. So, that and completely free, of course. So, introduction to complex waves. Up until now, the only thing we looked at AC-wise, in terms of a supply voltage, is um, has been assumed to be purely sinusoidal in nature. All right? Because that's what's most generally recognized in engineering. However, many supply waveforms are not sinusoidal. There are other periodic, i.e. waveforms that repeatedly cycle, um, that include those that are intentionally created, so a sawtooth waveform, square wave, triangular, as well as those caused by undesired distortion of another waveform. So we can end up with complex waveforms either because we want to, or because of um, other waveforms distorting the waveform that we really want. Okay. So um, a waveform that is not sinusoidal is called a complex wave. Such a waveform, we can um, show that it's composed of the sum of a series of sine waves of different frequencies and different amplitudes. More of that in a minute. If we look at this waveform here, it repeats between there and there but it's not it's not a standard perfect sine wave function of one peak and one trough okay but that between there and there is, is repeating so it's an example of a complex waveform all happy with that so far now Fundamental and harmonic frequencies. A complex wave has an initial major frequency that would come from that one overall period in the wave in the example that I showed you earlier. Alright, so that you turn that period into frequency, you'd have what's called the fundamental frequency of that complex waveform. So the lowest frequency that you can find in a complex waveform is called the fundamental. Then, you have other sine wave components added on top of that, that are called harmonics. And they, are, they have frequencies that are multiples of the fundamental. So you get a second harmonic, that's two times the frequency of the fundamental. Third harmonic is three times the frequency. Fourth harmonic is four times, and so on. Okay? Each of those harmonic frequencies will have its own amplitude in a particular complex waveform. So if we've got something that is fundamental frequency 50 hertz, like our AC mains, the second harmonic of that would be 100 hertz, the third harmonic 300 hertz, and so on. Okay? Yeah. So, general equation of a complex waveform b acting on bar circuit this may be represented as and it's lowercase v because we're talking about the voltage at an instant in time we've got a time involved in all of these and then it's just the basic sine wave of each component added together so v1 is the amplitude of the fundamental with omega being the angular frequency of that and we could turn that into f multiplying it by 2 pi, remember? V2 is the amplitude of the second harmonic 
two times over. V3 is the amplitude of the third harmonic. Vn is the is the amplitude of the n harmonic. And you can do that for as long as you want. These can all be different amplitudes and all and the frequencies multiples you can use. I hope you might not have any second harmonics or any third harmonics or the opposite or the third and the harmonics. Express, well, we can express a, a, a voltage as complex. If we applied that complex voltage to a circuit, we'd get a complex current. And so we can express that current as I is equal to I1 plus I2. And there again, these I1, I2, I3 are the amplitudes of the individual components in that waveform. All right. Now, these as beyond what we're going to do for any exercise I give you on this module, each of these waveforms can have a phase shift as well. So they can have a plus or minus a phase angle, but we're not going to take it that far. So all, 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 anything that I give you will just be sine a multiple of omega t. All right? No phase shifts. Yep. Again, are you all happy with that? Am I okay to move on? So, have a look at that problem. The complex waveform is given by V is equal to 200 sine 100 pi t plus 80 sine 300 pi t plus 40 sine 500 pi t volts. Determine A, which harmonics are present? The RMS value of the fundamental, you need to look back at some earlier work on AC to be able to find out how to calculate the RMS value. Okay, the frequency of the fundamental, the period of the fundamental, and the frequencies of the harmonics. Alright. Quite a bit looks quite a bit there, but it's not particularly difficult. So have a go at that. There's your function. Which part of that is the fundamental? The one with the lowest what? Lowest frequency, yeah? The frequency is this bit, isn't it? That's omega is the 100 pi bit there. Yeah? So the fundamental is... 200 sine 100 pi t. Yeah. That's that bit. With this being the bit we're interested in, because that's the frequency it's in omega first. Yeah. So that's omega 1. Yeah. So if omega 1 is equal to 100. Yeah. So therefore, second term is this bit, 80 sine 300 pi t. That bit being omega 2. I'll take the two off there for that. You'll see why in a minute. So, what we're interested in, that's the omega for that harmonic. Yeah? So what we're interested in is how many times is that more than the fundamental? That's 300 pi, so that's omega 3 third harmonic. Yeah? So the third harmonic present. 
So the fundamental's always going to be there. You can't have a waveform without a fundamental. Yeah? And that's always the lowest one, the lowest frequency that is the fundamental. Yeah? So the fundamental's the 100 pi. The second term is 80 sine 300 pi t. That's three times the frequency of the fundamental. So the second term, this one in here, is the third harmonic. All right, so the third term in the, in the waveform is 40 sine 500 pi t. Omega here is 500 pi. How many times bigger than omega 1 is it? Just the fifth half on it. We call that omega 3 and I call that omega 5. So it's a waveform with a fundamental and only odd harmonics up to the fifth. Yep. In summary, the fifth. Yep. It's a question about do you know what the parts of that function you're being given are? What what each part of it is to the waveform. Well you know you should know by now that you've got two hundred that's the amplitude of that fundamental. Sine, and then you've got that times sine, isn't it? And then you've got omega t, and that bit is the angular frequency, and it's equal to 2 pi f, remember. So it's usually expressed as a multiple of pi for that reason. Right? Yeah? So we know now that we've got a fundamental, a third harmonic, and a fifth harmonic in that waveform. What about RMS value? Who can remember anything about RMS value? something. Yeah. What's the peak in this case? So 200 times something. Yeah. Who can remember what it, what the RMS value is electrically? Because we're talking about a waveform here that is like that so, and that peak value from there to there is 200. But what is the RMS value? Roughly where does it sit? Correct. 0.707 times the peak. I said that was elsewhere in the notes. Alright. To be exact, it is 1 over root 2. I want to be absolutely exact, but 0.707 is near enough for most people. Okay. So, but what it is, is, remember, it's a value that sits, in this case, about 140 volts. It's the equivalent DC value of that waveform, remember. So when we talk about um, the AC mains from these sockets being 230 volts, 
that's an RMS value. The peak of that waveform is about 300. Yeah. It's the value that would give the same power to the same load as the equivalent D as, as 140 volts DC. Root mean square. You know what we done in the in the first week of statistics, where we to, to where we were gonna square those. We had to square those values to get rid of the negative. That's a similar thing. to taking the root of the mean square there as well, but not talking about it in the same way. To square all the values, find the mean, and then square root the mean. But for AC sine wave. 0.707 times a p. If that waveform was any other shape, that wouldn't be true. Right? That would be a different number there. Okay, so RMS value 0.707. What is it? 141.4 volts. So that fundamental would give the same power into a let's say 10 ohm resistor as 141.4 volts DC. Yep. That's what it means. Right, C. Frequency of the fundamental. Well, no, because what it means by frequency is in hertz. Remember, omega is the angular angular velocity or angular frequency in radians per second. What is it in hertz or cycles per second? Omega is equal to 100 pi. Yeah. What's the formula for omega in terms of frequency? Yep, 2 pi f. Therefore, f must be 100 pi over 2 pi. 50 times. Pi cancels out. Easy. How do we calculate the periodic time? If we do 50, what this is saying is we do 50 cycles in one second. How do we find how many seconds for one cycle? We've got 50 cycles per one second. F is equal to that. How many cycles for one second? Sorry, how, how long for one cycle? One over x, the reciprocal of the frequency. Yeah. 50. Twenty milliseconds. For Fifty hertz. It's 
what have we got to do to calculate the frequency of the third harmonic? Omega is equal to, omega 3 is equal to 300 pi. F, 300 pi. 2 pi. Omega 5. 500 pi. F, 500 pi. Two times. Right, because that's three times fundamental. And five times. So not particularly difficult. But it does rely on you remembering what all the parts of that equation for the term are. Okay. okay, everyone. Moving on. So, harmonic synthesis. This is the process of resolving a complex waveform into a series of sinusoidal components of ascending order of frequency. For example, it's possible to represent waveforms such as the square, triangular and sawtooth as a specific series of sine waves of different frequencies added together. Right. So, for example, the, the, the graphs that I've done there, the left hand one has got the um, y1 is 4 sine x, so it's got an amplitude of 4 to there, okay, and it's, uh, its frequency is um, 1 times pi there, so we got 1 cycle. The, uh, the red one, that's this black, the black one, I think in your notes that might be on the next page, I'm not sure. On the same page. So the, so the black waveform is what is 4 times sine x. The red waveform has an amplitude of 2, so it goes up to 2, and it has a frequency of 2. So therefore, we get two full cycles in the same time as one full cycle of the fundamental. Yeah. And when we add those two together, we get that waveform shape. So that is 4 sine x, the fundamental, plus 2 sine 2x. So it's the fundamental plus what number harmonic? Second, because the frequency of the fundamental is 1 frequency of that harmonic is 2, so it must be the second harmonic. Okay? So, let's have a look. So, Let's just put that in again. Y1 was um, 4 sine x. Yeah. Y2 is uh, 2 sine 2x. Two double the frequency. I'm going to put in a Y3 equals, uh, let's do one point. Five uh, sine three x third harmonic. Yep. So can you see now that the green waveform is doing one, two, three cycles in the same time as the fundamental is doing um, one. Yeah. So it's got three times the frequency. 
the amplitudes are also different. They don't have to be. And then we can we can um, show the complex of the first two like this. So y four is equal to y one plus y two. And, and on on this graphing software, I I can turn these ones off if I want to, because that's that the, that's the the red one's the uh, fundamental, the blue one is the second harmonic, and the purple one is the combination of the two. What the amplitude of the um, the complex? Because um, if you what it's effectively doing is taking every point along this axis and adding the values of the two waveforms together. So you could do, in this area, you're adding roughly two to three, so you're getting about five. You see that? Because that's every instant is added together. So you, what you're doing is taking a point, let's, let's just put it, um, let's put x, x is equal to uh, 1. I'll put a line on there where x is equal to 1. The value of the fundamental when x is equal to 1 is 3.366. Just shot that down. Someone? All right. The value of the second harmonic when x is 1 is 1.819. And you should find if you add those two together, you should get somewhere around about 5.184. Because you're adding two positive values together, you must end up with more. It does. It's gone up to 5. Good. The two add together 5.184. So add 3.366 to 1.819. There might be an odd, small bit of random difference. Yes, because there's a, there's a random. All right. So taken, that is the, the addition of the other two. It's the complex wave is the addition of that. And that. If we then go and add in five and add in the third harmonic as well, we get that one. So let's get rid of this one. Get rid of X one. So we here we got the red, but this one is um Fundamental, blue is second harmonic, green is third harmonic, <laughs> and that way for it's the combination of all three. So we're adding that second harmonic in there has gone has gone from that purple one to that red one. And what the idea is, uh, I'm gonna, what I'm going to get you to do, is to experiment on what happens as you add um, harmonics to a fundamental waveform using this graph software. I'm going to be asking you to do something along that lines in the, in the assignment and therefore this will be um, the introduction to that. Right. So, just to show you you can zoom in and out on these um, graphs with the wheel on your mouse. Okay. These allow you to turn waveforms off and on. So you can turn on stuff, turn it off. All right. Um, if you want to more accurately zoom in on a particular area, you can go to this banner up here and type in minimum, maximum, Z and uh, X and Y axis values. 
sometimes when you do a sine wave, if the frequency is high, that just looks like a big block of red in there. You need to zoom in on it, zoom in on the on the x-axis, but not on the y-axis. If you want to keep the, all the y-axis showing, but zoom in on the x-axis so you can see the waveform. Sorry? No, there's the return to home button. But there is, you, have to, you, have to, you can either use these to zoom in, that zooms in evenly on both axes. But sometimes you want to be zoomed out on the y-axis, but zoomed in on the x or vice versa. So you need to type them in. Alright? And you, uh, wherever I need you to do graph and stuff, other than if we've got a graph like statistics, histograms and things in Excel, you're probably going to be using this one. You can get an app on your iPhone or your Android or your iPad or whatever, as well as Windows and Mac in your browser. Alright? So let's, we'll just have a quick run through um, what I'm asking you to uh, experiment with uh, this afternoon. So in this exercise, what you're going to do is um, you're going to investigate the effect of adding different types of harmonics to a fundamental sine wave in order to observe any specific patterns. Carry out this initial investigation will be of value to you when answering a task in your forthcoming assignment too, which will be heading your way after Christmas. No, uh, well, I don't know. There's something Omal put in it, and there's two tasks Omal and three or four tasks for me. All right. Very easy questions. Carrying out, so you should compile screenshots of various graphs and notes that will go with them for further reference. A copy of the Desmos user guide will be provided. You can pick one up from there. Okay. Um, and, I'll, and if you really get stuck, just ask and I'll come and help. All right. So over the page. Investigation one. So I'm asking you to enter the function y1 is 20 sine x and adjust the zoom so you can see two or three complete cycles of the waveform. Then enter the function um, y is equal to uh, 10 sine 2x, so it's half the amplitude of the um, fundamental, twice the frequency, so it's the second harmonic, like so. Don't do this yet, please. And then type in y0 is equal to y1 plus y2, so you'll get a complex waveform similar to the one we just did, it's just the amplitude different. Okay. Continue adding even harmonics. So after that, continue adding just even harmonics. So second, fourth, sixth, eighth, up to the eighth harmonic, and observe the effect on the waveform produced. So you're looking to see whether there's a pattern to it. Does it start to make any kind of more familiar shape to it, as opposed to just something a bit more random? Yeah. And I do, like I said earlier, I suggest that you um, make notes. One thing to look for is, is the waveform symmetrical, both above and below the um, horizontal x-axis? So does it make the same, same shape above and below, or is it different? Okay. Is it symmetrical? Will it mirror across the y-axis? Or does it rotate around it? If you rotated it around the y-axis, would it superimpose over itself again? If I took that and turned it 180 degrees, would it superimpose? Or if I done a reflection in there, would it superimpose? That things to look for. Okay. Second, the investigation is similar to the first one, except that's about adding odd 
harmonics only. So fundamental, third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and so on, up to the ninth. Okay, and then the, again, looking to see whether there's any specific uh, pattern to what's happening to the complex waveform as you add extra harmonics. And then lastly, investigate the effect of adding both the odd and the even harmonics from fundamental up to the, I think I said, ninth harmonic. All right. Um, each time, make the, um, the amplitude of the harmonic, the fundamental amplitude, divided by the harmonic number. So I think I've said that in here somewhere. Yeah, so if, you're do, if you've got a fundamental as 20, like here, you, with a third harmonic, you make the amplitude 20 over 3, roughly 7. It doesn't have to be, you know, I'm look, not looking for you to have four or five decimal places in there. Alright, the fifth harmonic, 20 over 5 is 4. Just make the, 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 the amplitude fundamental divided by the harmonic number, roughly. Right?